Hello, my name is Jess Abrams. I'm a music practitioner and educator. I teach community music at Edinburgh College to second year students on a three year honors degree in music. When I wrote the abstract for the CMA, I thought I'd end my presentation with more questions than answers. However, I now know where I stand on the question of whether community music should be compulsory or not, but I'll get to that in a few minutes. A little bit of scene setting. As of this year, community music became a compulsory module at Edinburgh College. I have 45 students for an hour and a half each week for 36 weeks. This carries the same timing and credit value as music theory and composition classes here at the college. I mention this as it's important to note that our department head sees community music as something on equal footing with other music related subjects. He sees it along with instrumental instruction, another compulsory module at the college, as a clear pathway for musicians after graduation. Albeit he is kind of destination or employability driven um, as this is seen as a form of success measurement for the college, but nevertheless he also has an understanding of the value of community music, which is really rewarding for me. Saying all of that, he is the one that chose to make it compulsory and in fact did not consult me in the decision. Having the decision made for me meant that I really didn't have the opportunity to interrogate how I felt about this very far in advance of it happening. In fact, I only had about three weeks notice before basically I was in it. Uh, so I had to just be a very responsive practitioner. So this year has caused me some discomfort, some deep questioning and interrogation of my beliefs and approaches, particularly pertaining to my practice in the field, but more so to my practice in the classroom. Saying that, the two are of course inextricably linked I am, after all, the same person, regardless of the context I'm working in. So how different can or should my practice be? The people in the classroom are my students, and I must teach them from the meta, you know, the underpinning concepts, overarching responsibilities, from the welcome to the circle, to closure, to noticing what's happening in the room, not just musically, but on many other levels as well. And much of it comes down to the duty of care we carry when we're working with others. But those students are also a group of participants having an experience. So I have a duty of care to them from that perspective. If this were a workshop in the field, the participants would be there by choice. And this is the ethos I work from. Those in the room are choosing to be there. So my starting point for this year was an awareness that many in the room would not have chosen to be there. How do I reconcile this with my practice, which is so much of who I am? Saying all of this, how do students feel when told that choice has been removed and they must attend a class that they may not have otherwise chosen? How do, how do they reconcile this with who they are and, and what they want and where they see themselves going? So I asked some students to tell me how they felt about having to take the class. Um, there are a few of their answers in the written transcript that's available in, that I'll put up in the chat box when I'm finished. Um, but here are two examples of content from students' final reflective essays. The first one is from the 1819 year when it was an optional unit, so everybody in the room had chosen to be there. The kind of learning and work we are doing is far more personal than other classes and requires close examination of ourselves, our character, and the way we interact with other people and the environment we live in. The second slide is an example of a comment from a student who specifically told me they would have never chosen this module. From, this is from the 1920 year. I may sometimes find it hard to engage with this particular class. It is not something I'm overtly keen on. I understand the benefits of trying it out and it may come in use further down the line. However, I excel at projects I enjoy and find more directly relevant to my specific career choice. Both show that something was gained. And in the second one, I've highlighted one section in blue because for me, I can choose to read into it that this particular student will find value later. I suppose you could say that suits my data and my findings. Um, so, 
the questions I've had throughout and, and are very much based on my ethos and yours may be different are firstly, how do I reconcile my ethos of participant choice with that of a compulsory module? And secondly, what impact does it have on my practice and on those in the room? So in answering these questions, I should first say that I have and will probably continue to have issues with community music being compulsory. However, that doesn't mean it shouldn't be. You're kind of getting to what my answer is, I suspect. So firstly, I reconcile my ethos of choice by knowing that some of the students in the room will later run workshops with people who are there by choice. And I am in fact planting seeds about the duty of care we have and the importance of boundaries of what it means to hold a group or even just one person that you're working with. These, by the way, seem to be the areas where students are most surprised and curious and where they seem to have more kind of aha moments and realizations about what's involved. So yes, I think it should be compulsory. And yes, it impacts what I do in the classroom. But what's wrong with that? I am a responsible and flexible practitioner. So why wouldn't I be that in the classroom? So I take the stand now that it should be compulsory, even though it's not as straightforward for me and I cannot do everything I might do if everyone was there by choice. And nor is it always comfortable for the student. It affects, it affects everyone in the room and what I can do. Although what I noticed this past year was that when given the space and freedom and safety to embrace that freedom in the classroom, students eventually say yes to it more than I or they themselves expected. As one student put it, oh, I should say, and of course I think it serves future participants. This is how one student put it. I was never interested. I expected nothing. It wasn't for me. I'd be bad at it. After the class, I enjoyed the class. I had fun and learned a lot. I developed as a person and I gained respect for the field. So finally, I'll say that even planting that seed of responsibility of the craft can make a big difference in both the practice of those who might choose to or need to go into enabling other people to play music, as well as the people they work with. Thank you very much. And here are my contact details. Ciao for now.